SEO this week. Hey everyone, this is Clint Butler from Digital Lear, and this is episode number 30 of SEO this week. Today we're going to go over content, ripoff reports.com, and status cords, plus a whole bunch more. So I hope you uh, enjoy the the ride, as it were. On our first site, we're going to TonyRobbins.com. Don't let the name fool you. It's actually a pretty good post um, provided. I'm pretty sure it's a guest post. Uh, but regardless, it's still good. Uh, do you use video for your marketing? Uh, we, use, we use it a lot. We like to leverage our content, especially the content we're making for clients, and then turn around and turn that into videos. Or let's say they're a photography place. Uh, you take a bunch of their images and turn, put some background music and make that a video, all that kind of stuff. So this really gets into the crux of why you should be using video if you're not already. And some common questions that uh, business owners have when they're considering it. The There are some cases, let's just face the facts, there are cases where your business might not be... Uh, receive much benefit from using video however for the most part i think if you use a little bit of imagination you can see some decent results so with that uh, i would check out this post is really well, well written um some eye candy on there to look at it if you're into that uh, and then uh, you know some just really some good information provided by the author so check it out the next website we're going to is HubSpot. This is uh, where we are, the 2017 state of content marketing, and it's an infographic. Honestly, I was a little bit disappointed by this post, especially coming from HubSpot. They're relying on an infographic created by some other people that were using a survey from the United Kingdom. That, all in all, isn't bad. However, content marketing is kind of what HubSpot's good at. Is, you know that's what they're supposed to be good at uh they have a significantly larger customer base than the uh survey pool that was used to make this infographic so i think they kind of did a disservice they should publish a 2017 state of content marketing uh blog post based off of what they've learned what their platform is doing because uh, they have a lot of insights that you know many of us will not be able to get not only from a survey perspective but just analyzing all that data that they're pulling into i think it would have been this kind of a missed opportunity for them all of that said they do have a free collection of content marketing templates that you can grab uh, i i grabbed it because i have cable and it took me a uh, you know a couple good minutes to download the entire file so there's a lot of information in there i think the landing page said 300 and some odd templates so check it out especially if you're stuck looking for content to make now getting on to the infographic again you know it's pretty good. There's actually some interesting information here. 79% of the people who were did the survey said that content marketing is effective, yet only 6% have a plan to do it. Um, content marketing is great for brand awareness. That's what we teach over here at Digital Year. We're creating content to rank. Yeah, that's all great, but we want to create more content in order to get your brand out there to increase brand awareness. Uh, so that's why we do it, and, and we pro promote it so much within our clients. Some marketing goals, you know, uh, let's see, 85% of those ads said that they use content marketing to increase traffic. However, only 9% said that the customer renewal rates was how they saw success. So content marketing in the in, for their goals is increasing traffic. That's what we, we teach it. Uh, and then customer renewal rates uh, should be a, a, uh, a key performance indicator for you as well so use both um how is your content marketing going to increase your customer retention i'm not sure that it really can i think your back-end services your uh your, you know actually providing the service uh doing follow-up with them all that stuff could increase your customer renewal rates could your content marketing do it i you know i think it could if you were doing it looking at it from a top of mind perspective and there's a couple other things in here that you'll see, like 70% of people expect to increase the amount of money that they're investing in their content marketing plan in 2017. And Twitter and Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn are the big winners uh, for which networks they're going to promote on. Honestly, from our perspective, Facebook, uh, YouTube and LinkedIn have been the, the best 
hitters for us and Pinterest right behind that. So I would focus on those if it were your, you're in an agency, but really got to look at which network is really right for you and where your market is at. Instagram, just I, you know, we just weren't successful at it. It didn't work for us, um, but it may work for a photographer for sure. Uh, and it may, you know, so check these things out. Look at the networks and then decide for yourself where you want to do this distribution stuff. But that's just my uh, two cents on that. And there's some other stuff you can find in here. Like I said, it's not what I would expect from HubSpot, but again, it is a good survey uh, and some good data points for at least for information for you. The next site is onpage.org. New one we added. A, it's called the XXL Guide to Status Codes and Their Consequences. Now, if you've seen any of our site audits, we mention status codes. In particular, we're looking for the 500 codes, which, as you can see in this post, the 500 codes relate to server errors. And then we look at the 400 codes, mainly the 404 errors. The reason we're looking at 404 errors which basically means your page is not there, you can't find it, uh, is so that uh, we know, like, if you have backlinks to this really popular post that for whatever reason you ended up deleting, then we want to know that and we'll find out where that traffic is coming from and we redirect that traffic to the new version if you created it or, or a custom 404 page that has a form on it. Uh, that's a really good thing to do with your 404 pages is put an opt-in form. Oops, sorry, you couldn't find it. However, if you want this cool free thing, by the way, uh, fill out your form. Fill out this uh, your information. Um, so that's really cool with 404s. Again, this thing goes into 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 error codes, and then mentions 900s, which uh, honestly most people aren't really going to knock into unless they're you know dealing with software creators. And it also says how to remove the errors, specifically the 404 errors, uh, and then what you can do to code a custom page if you're into coding. But there are plenty of plugins and stuff that can help you do that, or a web design team can make a custom 404 page for you. So if you want one of those, you reach out to us and we'll make one for you. Um, or if you're using WordPress, I'm sure you can find plenty of plugins. We used to use a, uh, an actual content management system that did it. Uh, for us, but now we just kind of redirect those 404 pages to relevant pages of the topic, and it makes it a little bit easier on the searchers. Uh, next site is Search Engine Land, and we're looking at is a ripoff report subverting Google takedowns. This is an interesting article, and it really goes into more of an awareness that ripoffreport.com is changing the URLs in order to bring. Uh, content back up that court orders were used to get it out of the Google index. So basically Google is, was presented a court order. They removed the URL from the index and now ripoff report in order to get around the court order is changing the URL ever so slightly in order for the Google to index it again. And the author is essentially blaming Google saying that their system is uh, not good enough it, to address th that uh, requirement. Here's my two cents. It's not Google's job to manage people's reputations or businesses' reputations. It's not Google's job to filter the internet. They obviously filter it within the scopes of their algorithms and what they do and do not want to do. But just like I wouldn't want them making or de determinations on what is and what is not fake news and what I should and should not be exposed to, uh, I don't want them doing the same thing with this. So if a court order says, hey, take down this URL and Google complies with it and the people who... Um, had the URL in the first place, changed the URL in order for it to get back up in the in the index. That's not Google's problem. That's an argument between you, in this case, the ripoff report, and, and the the client or the agency that is providing reputation management services. So get better at your job is for what is what I would say, and start uh, outranking or building a networks and building trust around the brand and in in, in outranking the ripoff ripoff report uh, with positive stuff. Uh, versus making an article telling Google that they should clean up their act. 
in, in the truth, uh, you as a reputation management professional, um, I'll speak to the art to the author like he because he's listening to me, which would be cool, but he's probably not. But you, as reputation management professionals, are responsible for this stuff. Uh, and if you are not making positive branding and doing positive branding as part of that, and allowing a site like Ripoff Report to take over the SERPs, then you're the one with the problem. I don't see it as Google's. And your issue can easily be solved by going back to the courts and asking to have this taken down again. It's and ultimately until they change the laws um, to say that when a court order says take down the URL out of the Google index, it needs to say take down the URL off of ripoff report. Um, and that doesn't that takes care of your problem more permanently than just removing it from the index from Google, Bing, or wherever. Interesting article, interesting topic. Uh, clearly, something that's you know will have to be debated uh, and decide you know how much we want government intervention and corporations filtering out the information that we are seeing, reading, uh, and being exposed to. All right, we'll go to HubSpot. This is actually a really good one. How to launch a virtual conference for lead generation and customer acquisition. A step-by-step -step guide. Sounds like a really hefty promise, doesn't it? And this post delivers it. They give you the templates and how to do it. Uh, they give you the tools and how to manage it. They give you emails and how to schedule your uh, speakers everything it literally is exactly what it says it is a step-by-step -step guide to run a virtual conference now this isn't a series of webinars it really could be but basically what it is you just leverage a platform and host speakers all virtually and instead of having them all come to your Vegas meeting uh, you can do it right there on the internet uh, and I think it's an Excellent, excellent idea. This is an excellent post. I'm certainly going to come back for it. We're going to create a um, we're going to do it. That's just the way it is. We're going to set one up and we're going to hold a virtual conference. And I think we're going to focus the first uh, on local SEO because that's, you know, what we like doing. It's and uh, not enough people are doing the right things and talking about local SEO uh, in the way that I think it should be done. So I think we're going to do it. We're going to do a virtual conference on local SEO, uh, not advanced SEO techniques and all that other crap. We're just going to do local seo how local businesses can rank uh, or how seo agencies can help them out give you some resources and put you in contact with the people in, in the know that can leverage this stuff and do great and wonderful things for your business or your clients businesses Just check out this post by the way <laughs> kind of left that out there check out this post you're going to have so many ideas just reading this thing and be like wow Wow, this is not an easy thing, but it's not hard either with this step-by-step -step guide. Uh, let's look at this local search form. I brought this one up because we added them to our our watch list. I like this form. They put a lot of great information in here, and there's a lot of professionals uh, inside of it. So I thought it would be something that you should... Um, it's a form that you should check out if you're in the local search space. And if you're not and you just want to follow us and let us pick out the best stuff for you, you can do that too. Here is a SEO who had gotten received a new client. And they're doing the audit of their search console stuff. And they got in there and found that some other agency or their prior person, whoever it was, I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm just kind of piecing through here. But they figured out that what they did was after they were no longer providing services to the client, these guys went into the search console and told Google to remove that site from the index inside of their own search console. Any industry, including SEO industry, has douchebags, and that's a douchebag move right there. So uh, I, I wanted to highlight this one because there are people out there, out there that do that crap, uh, and you need to be aware of it as an agency or a business owner and know how to navigate the search console, which is probably the easiest platform that Google has made for webmasters and business owners to find out if you, your old agency is a douche and did something like that to you. 
if they did it, just take them back out, re-index them, or get someone else to help you out with it. Um, but at least you know that you can spot it right off the bat. And then I would make the the meanest, nastiest, ugliest uh, uh, hate letter or review I could possibly do to that agency uh, f- for for doing that. Uh, that's just garbage. Uh, it's bad for, for business. It's bad for our industry. Uh, and it needs to be highlighted. Really, the... If that was me, and that, and I found out that happened to a client, I, I would, I, I would probably highlight that agency in, in the spotlight uh, as someone to stay away from, for sure. Next, we're going to do Jeff Keenan's blog, is Google Data Studio Template Dashboard. Now, I wanted to highlight this, and I'm actually going to do the same thing that Jeff did. He made this post specifically about this this SEO dashboard. However, there are so many more. Google Data Studio is a brand new tool by Google. It's a little bit complicated, a little bit much uh, for beginners, but if you're used to you know, manipulating their stuff in spreadsheets, you can actually, you'll love this thing. What I would take do, I think I wanna do is create a post that has more templates because we're using Google Data Studio to automate our reporting for our AdWords clients. So basically, we plug in the, uh, we have a template. We got it from somewhere else, obviously. Uh, we edited it for our needs, and then we plugged in our client's AdWords data, and we invited our clients to, to monitor that. So all they got to do in there, they can go in there every day if they want to, once a month, whatever, and their reporting is all right there, right in front of them. They don't have to decipher it in their AdWords accounts. That's what the beauty of Google Data Studio is for us. Honestly. I think the only way they can make this better is if they can take it so that I can um, print out the or embed the outputs from Google Data Studio onto another site and update that data in real time on a website. And imagine the value that we get out of that. There's so many more things you can connect to Google Data Studio. I think you should check it out. If anything, if you're into SEO, get the get this hooked up this uh, Google Data Studio the SEO dashboard uh, template in your Google Data Studio account, and it's really instead of going into analytics, just open that up. Boom. All right, look at your numbers real quick. Good. I'm happy. Don't see anything glaring, and then move on with your days. So check this one out. I, I like it. Uh, the next slide is SEMrush, their SEMrush blog, and it was five ways to enhance Amazon listings for SEO. Really excited about this because there's not a lot of people, Mark, doing really good content about actually enhancing your Amazon listings. And unfortunately, in this case, we're still not. The There is some actionable advice, evaluating competitors, getting your price right, encouraging reviews, and then driving external traffic. But the one section that I think everyone would have gotten some really great value out of is the optimized product listings. And basically what it says is add numbers or reviews, check out your pricing, and make some images. I mean, it's only two paragraphs. Clearly, there's got to be more to just to optimizing your Amazon uh, product listing. So I think they missed the the mark on this if you are in amazon and you know how to optimize these product listings write a blog post about it and share it with me i swear i will promote it to high heaven for you if you just give people the information on how to do that right that's all we want just how to do it right this other stuff is kind of obvious encourage reviews yeah i want reviews so you if to to rank higher um but what is this what else do i need to do with my product listings in order to be successful on the amazon platform so please write that plus please um beyond that for this article again i just summarized it for you evaluate your competition get the price right encourage reviews optimize your listings and drive external traffic and that will help you rank more higher within the amazon uh, search engines uh, we continue with them and is a blog content types that every e-commerce business should use this is actually a really good post uh, that i enjoyed reading and it just kind of goes into literally that just different kind of stuff that you can use to promote your e-com business. Video content is mentioned, obviously, product videos, uh, those you know 
box unboxing videos are really cool. You can get someone to do that and do some webinars if it applies to you. And then there's some different suggestions on keywords and what the topics, uh, and where to find some more ideas um, to create more more content for your for your for your e-commerce store. Really good post. I like it, and it probably apply to just about anyone doing content marketing. Next is a marketing pro. So we're going to look at lead generation, landing page, benchmarks, and top tactics. Not so much top tactics as it gives you some great information, i.e. Uh, 33 landing pages with longer word counts, 800 plus, have a 33% less conversion rate than pages with shorter word counts, less than 200. So shorter is better. If you're into copywriting or doing landing pages, that actually should be good news for you. It's easier to write less than 200 words than it is 800 plus. Um, that's all I'm saying. There's a lot more data just like that in here. Like Again, not so much in the way of tap or content tactics, but just data points to help you uh, when you're thinking about creating your landing pages or working with an agency to create your landing pages. And the final side is LSA Insider. This is our digital agencies chasing profits over performance. Another clickbait title that is targeted clearly for agencies to kind of get them over their, uh, kind of take them into the ego space, but it's not even anything of what it's talking about. Personally, to me, the, the article, as I read it and I understand it, is that advertisers have... A, they want to limit the budget in order to see a return on investment. And then agencies are having to balance that with having a significant amount of budget in order to establish what that return on investment is. And there's a communications error. We've had it here uh, at Digital Ear as well between the agency and the advertiser and the level of expectations versus what reality is. M as an example, you don't want to be bidding on a $10 cost per click keyword with a $150 a month budget and saying, so what was my return on investment on that? I'm going to tell you it's probably going to be really less. And I'm going to beat you up and make you or ask you to increase your budget. Uh, and that's what they're, they're arguing is that you should not be uh, getting more budget as a strategy. Personally, I think the guy has missed the mark. He missed the idea of uh, where, why they're asking for more budget. I need a significant amount of ad spend in order to give you that data. You can't make those kind of decisions off of 10, 15, 20 visits. You need 100 to get a good conversion rate. And if that means you need more budget, then you should be asking for more budget. As an agency owner, it is my responsibility to tell you, the advertiser, that you need it and why. And as you, as an advertiser, is responsibility to manage your marketing budget in order to understand understand uh, that you need to be you need more exposure in order to determine a true ROI from any marketing form and in this case it's talking about paid ads but that's any marketing form you can't say that it's not working uh, if you don't give it the time uh, and attention that it needs in order to grow and mature so that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed this week's SEO This Week episode number 30. Uh, we're going to start doing some interviews and stuff. Uh, we're going to put SEO This Week, and we might actually uh, continue with the SEO This Week uh, name and just put like interviews with or interviews about, etc. So I'd like to hear from you. Just some interviews you would like to hear, people you would like us to talk to uh, in a no BS format so that they can give you their insights and views, etc. And I like to make that probably a Wednesday thing. Uh, we do this again every Monday, so that's when we we're publishing SEO this week, the, the news episodes, the roll-up episodes. So maybe we'll just do the, the interviews every Wednesday or every other Wednesday. And I think if you like that, just let me know in the comments section below and again hope you have a great week